I don't know about y'all, but Dane Cook, I like Dane Cook. I thought Dane Cook was hilarious. Uh, I didn't know much about him, and I was a kid when I watched him. But he just had that, he had that physical type of humor where he'd make jokes and then, like, he'd walk around, you know, and then jump and stuff. Or roll around on the ground, and it was very engaging. Dane Cook. I didn't know he lost everything. I thought he just kind of, like, I thought his brand of comedy just wasn't for everybody anymore. Hmm. Dane Cook does not. Maybe that's why it was funny when I was a kid because, like, of how he acted. I don't make me laugh at all in any way, shape. Okay, Ron White, shut your ass up. There's, but there's definitely a joke that you know had to make you laugh, man. Perform. How can any comedian get as famous as Dane Cook has with no jokes? He doesn't oh. make me laugh, but that doesn't mean he's not funny. What? He doesn't get credit. He came up with a new genre, sort of style of comedy. That. Thank you, Bill Burr. Oh my God, the only sensible person here, and that's also actually funny. Guy is a total fucking trailblazer. This guy is a monster fucking talent that can kind of do anything. Dane Th Cook. Thank you. Like, obvious, honestly, it doesn't matter what Rolling Stone just fucking said because Bill Burr just gave him the cosign. Made his network television debut on Letterman in 1997. When I was little, my dream, all I wanted to do was take karate. I used to run around my house. <laughs> <laughs> And I begged my dad, I was like, Dad, please, can I take karate? Come on. Nobody could have predicted that this guy would become the biggest comedian in the world just a few years later. The next day- Guys, you gotta remember at the time, this was, this was different, you know? Like, nobody was really doing that, like, you know? <laughs> After that Letterman set, Dave noticed a shift in his performances. He trusted himself more, more movement, more emotion, whatever it took to get laughs. For me, it was tough growing up because I learned everything from- I Oh my god, he had long hair? And five sisters, okay? I used to wear a tampon just to fit in, okay? So where to go. <laughs> Here comes Peter Cottontail. I, uh, I love sex. I always, you know what I mean? The thing is, it's just, mmm. I'm crazy for it. I just, you know, I'm... <laughs> One year later, Cook would appear on the new show, Premium Blend, on Comedy Central, a stand-up comedy... You guys gotta let him, let him cook. He was younger there. He, he was literally letter, younger there. ...TV show that helped amplify numerous comedians in the late 90s, including Dave Chappelle, Gabriel Iglesias, and Amy Schumer. Then in 2000, Dane got a half-hour special on Comedy Central Presents. It seemed like he was on the right trajectory to becoming a mainstream success, but his career reached a standstill after that special. Some of you might think it's because he wasn't funny. He got enough exposure to a large audience through TV, and they decided they wouldn't be paying money to come see him live, which could be true. However, comedy as a whole was in a rough spot. The late 70s and 80s witnessed a comedy boom that the world hadn't seen before. George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Steve Martin, Eddie Murphy are just a few of the many icons who dominated that era. However, the 90s saw a huge downturn. Comedy clubs were closing all over the country, and the Comedy Central TV channel was yet to be established. Most successful comedians in the 90s usually got their notoriety TV through television shows. sitcoms. Everybody Loves Raymond, Home Improvement, The Jamie Foxx Show, oh All American God. Girl, Drew Carey Show, the list goes on and on and on. These comedians would earn a fan base, then embark on a large stand-up tour for Airline food! What's the deal with that? <laughs> ...the audience that loves their TV show. Now, obviously, in the 90s, you can't just produce your own show and upload it to TV, so comedians who didn't have Hollywood connections needed to grind for years. They would do short stand-up sets in comedy clubs all over the country and slowly yeah. build their reputation. Dane was willing to do that old-school grind. He hoped at one of his open mics he would catch the attention of a talent manager with connections or a network looking to cast him in a massively popular TV show. But by 2003, he basically had nothing to show for, mm. besides being the intro for Smash Mouth's all-star music video. I am the waffler. With my griddle of justice, oh. I bash the enemy in the head, or I burn them like so. Oh. Dane had also just released his comedy. Oh my god, he had a movie too where he was like worked at a store or something. I remember that. I forgot what the movie was called though. Album Harmful of Swallowed and had nobody to promote it to. It was time to take his career into his own hands, and this decision would launch him into superstardom. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor. War I was about to say, good thing, because I don't got no water, bro. War Thunder. War Thunder is the employee of the month. That's what it was. Most extensive vehicle combat game ever made. Mind arms, specific experience. And has something Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation. 
You so fucking lost more. me. You and fucking MySpace lost has me. Immediate strongest for multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, and so much more. Thanks, War Thunder. August 1st, 2003, a new social networking service called MySpace has launched, and after a few months of it being public, Dane decided he would give it a shot. He signed up and immediately started spamming clips and links to his short comedy sets, which were hosted on his website, danecook.com. Just like comedians today post 30 seconds to multiple yeah. minutes of a set on TikTok, Dane did the same thing on his website. Mm. Long before every social media was riddled with spam messages that link to identity. Oh, he's the soldier boy of comedy theft criminals people would actually engage with someone posting a link that says check this out dane gained thousands of friends very quickly on myspace they were called friends but it's the same thing as followers he began sending them messages and i was like yeah this new thing myspace i get on there i take my 2500 people and one night he was, i come home from the laugh factory this is uh steve-o's thing and the whole night i think i probably respond to 2500 people like welcome to the uh, by their name hey carla in where i didn't know he was Iowa, on here sought you birthday last week happy birthday mm. here's a link and i start sending people Hello, i spend the whole night i go home every night for four years i shook every hand digitally with every fan and sent links to pretty much every single person until I had millions of followers and could not do it anymore. Dane was doing the door-to-door -door sales equivalent of marketing his comedy online. One by one, he created a digital empire on a site that was being grossly underestimated by the entertainment industry. On top of MySpace, Dane also saw the value underestimated by the entertainment Oh my gosh. Entertainment industry. On top of MySpace, Dane also saw the value in putting audio versions of his comedy on sites like oh. Napster and even LimeWire. Little by little over the next year, fans purchased or, more likely, illegally downloaded his Harmful of Swallowed CD, which contained iconic bits like the BK Lounge, Monopoly, Not So Kool Aid, and Tire in the Face. You would put me on drive through every night. <laughs> Why do people insist on yelling at the drive through? You know, it's modern technology. I'd be there with my little headset. Hi, welcome to Burger King. May I take your order? <laughs> Sir, whopping onion! What's this material is considered by fans to be his best still to this day, <laughs> and many others still have no idea why people thought it was funny. Dane's humor was very much built around young adults, and since college kids were the vast majority of people using the internet, he was in the right place. He quickly started selling out 2,000 to 2,500 seat venues primarily at colleges in the US. Random thought, I feel like people who make their little hearts like this are fucking tryhards. Bro, come on, it's always been like this. You're not cool. Shut the fuck up. I hate you. He created a hand sign slash logo as a symbol for his fans, reminiscent of Jay-Z's rock. This was dubbed the Super Finger or Sufi. According to Dane, this is when your middle finger alone does not convey the intensity of your emotion. He got a little bit of mainstream attention too, if you count being the sausage mascot in Mr. 3000. Hey, oh, yes. hey buddy, buddy, come here. Help me out, please. With zipper. Hey, can you give me a hand? By 2005, MySpace was the most popular social media site in the world, and Dane was the most popular comedian on the site. He had momentum, and he was on the cusp of something big. He set up a 20-date tour and hired a production team to film it so he would have more content for his social media pages. Torgasm was initially a webisode that ended up getting purchased by HBO and turned into a legitimate TV show. During Torgasm was when Dane realized just how powerful the internet was. He booked a show at Penn State expecting 3,000 fans, but had to get moved to the Bryce Jordan Center because they sold 12,000 tickets. That's crazy. The material he was practicing on this tour was his second comedy album and special, Retaliation. Despite his huge internet following and multiple sold out shows, was the... Dane wasn't respected. I think that was like the first one I seen, or first time I had seen his shit. In the comedy world. A week before I released my second album, Retaliation, a week before, we couldn't get one publication to write about it. Spin, Rolling Stone, like anybody, nobody. All he had was his MySpace fans. And because of them, Dane Cook was about to make history. 
July 26, 2005, Dane officially released his comedy CD album, Retaliation, with Comedy Central Records. Two weeks later, he was number four on the Billboard Hot 200, directly under Now 19, Young Jeezy, and Mariah Carey. Wow. It was the most successful now comedy 19. album debut since Steve Martin's A Wild and Crazy Guy in 1978, 27 years earlier. Damn. The album went two times platinum and remained the number one Billboard comedy album for 49 weeks. What? Retaliation contained two discs of raunchy college humor bits like Banff, the friend that nobody likes, where he's credited for creating the term Karen that is wildly popular today. Karen is always a douchebag. Every group has a Karen and she's always a bag of douche. And when she's not around, you just look at each other and go, God, Karen, she's such a douchebag. Until she walks up and then you're like, hey, what's up, Karen? Other fan favorites like Struck by a Vehicle and The Creepy Guy at Work. Immediately after this album boomed, he started getting recognized by the entertainment industry. His first gig, a two-minute set at the MTV VMAs, where he absolutely bombed. We like a little violence in this country. And oh, I know no, 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 please don't show it. Like me, you can't deny it. Sometimes when you see somebody walking down the street wearing a Superman t-shirt, you just want to shoot them in the chest. And when they start to bleed, go, I guess not. He appeared on Jay Leno's late night show where he did this. First of all, thank you, but before that, I just want to let you know that I am a, I'm, I'm, I'm a massive fan oh my God. of yours. Thank and you. uh, I mean, you're beautiful, you're, you're a talented monster, and uh, North Country, and just, uh, wow. I mean, I know I'm kissing your ass here, but. Uh, <laughs> Then on the Jimmy Kimmel show where he was an absolute madman. Look. <laughs> she's exceptional, okay? True idea. She's exceptional. She's exquisite. She's uh -huh. she's so many words in my vernacular. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yes, Tom is making a play for uh, oh. KH. I'll be home soon, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> He got to host SNL in December 2005 and then a second time in 2006. He hosted the Teen Choice Awards in 2006 because he was every teen's favorite oh comic. Dane also starred in a new film alongside Jessica Simpson called Employee of the Month. Jessica which is Simpson? Honestly, a pretty solid movie. Easily his best role. From there, he had Good Luck Chuck and My Best Friend's Girl. His stand-up exploded to heights that people didn't think were possible. Cure Insurance Arena, Meadowlands Arena, Michelob Ultra Arena, Allstate Arena. Dane Cook was selling out 5,000 to 12,000 person venues every week, which peaked when he got the opportunity to perform at the legendary Madison Square Garden. That's the only crazy. problem was, he didn't have any material prepared because he was so busy doing movies. Oh, but you can't turn down MSG. Oh, Dane shit. had no choice. <laughs> The promoter apparently had a $150,000 oh, no. budget to promote the show, but they didn't have to spend a dime because of Dane's social media following. As soon as the tickets went live, he posted the link on MySpace. Sold out. So they added a second show the same day. Sold that one out. Dane Cook became the second comedian oh, in history to sell out the garden two nights in a row. The first being Andrew Dice Clay, who was ironically like the Dane Cook of the 90s. Dane hired a small camera crew to film, thinking it was either going to be his best or worst performance in history. He improvised half of the material. Wait, that was rambling, this? screaming, sound effects. Wait, that was this one? This one was like, wasn't this? This was like a really, really good one. What the fuck? His usual shtick. This and was he, the like the best, like the best one. He absolutely crushed it. This off-the-cuff performance was released later as his rough around the edges I remember special. This. Dane was zooming past veteran comics. The industry had never seen someone go from a hack at the funny farm to a stadium icon in this short period of time. He simply could not take an L, which is when the hate started rolling in. Uh. Rolling Stone published an article, The Jokes on Us. How can any comedian get as famous as Dane Cook has with no jokes? This is just hating. Oh my god. This is just literally hating. Jim Brewer, a stand-up veteran who hosts a radio show that often interviews comedians, said, Not one comedian comes on my show and says, I'm so happy for him. Which is weird. They can't stand this poor guy. Steven Rosenfield, director of the American Comedy Institute, says Dane is kind of like Perrier water. It's brilliantly bottled, but it's still seltzer. By the way, drink water. Your wife. Every other day, there was a journalist writing about how much they hated Dane Cook. Family Guy took shots at him. Mad TV had a parody skit about him. He became a punching bag in the uh... entertainment world. Now, it's pretty easy to say that people were just jealous of Dane's success, and that could be true. Like, a lot of jealousy, a lot of animosity that I 
at a young age was famous, hanging around with beautiful women, rich. Even Joe Rogan has said the same. I remember when Dane Cook was killing it. There were so many haters. And not just because of all the real reasons to be a hater, but also just because of his success was so astronomical. I remember people would just fume thinking about Dane Cook selling out arenas. But it's pretty easy to see major flaws in <laughs> Dane's comedy. His humor heavily relies on delivery rather than genuinely witty content. And but that's the thing, that's his humor. Like, if you don't like it, don't watch it. How are you going to get mad because of how somebody else manages to make other people laugh like oh my god this is like a new level of hate where it's like you're literally hating on the dude because he's making people laugh in a way that you don't approve of is funny like what the fuck many of his jokes revolve around relatable everyday experiences such as playing monopoly and having friends and eating at a fast food restaurant he exhibits this you know what i mean type humor or simply relatable humor which is amplified by his sound effects, screaming, and insane body contortions. Now, his sound effects are damn good, and he's a very good storyteller, but often his stories lead nowhere, falling flat and ending with something like... You're the person nobody likes! I know, it is so true, and that's why it's funny. It is so true. That's why it's funny. Because it's so true, hence funny. Unlike typical comedians who display brokenness or cynicism, Cook maintains a positive, unassuming lifestyle where dudes think he's the man and girls think he is a heartthrob. But just because he prioritizes showmanship doesn't make him unfunny. Dane didn't even address the hate. At first, he actually liked it. He felt like a comedy supervillain. Plus, he was doing arena after arena filled with tens of thousands exactly of people right. laughing. He could care less what one journalist or one open mic comic thought. There is one very clear objective to comedy, to make people laugh. Dane was getting laughs and making millions. He was winning. But the reason many people hated him wasn't just because of his good looks and success. He was labeled a joke thief, and stealing jokes uh -oh. is a career-ending sin in comedy. Andy Dane's Schumer. 2005 Retaliation God album contained it, a few Dane jokes Cook. that were very similar to Louis C.K.'s 2001 album, Live from Houston, Texas. The first accusation of plagiarism comes from a bit they both did when choosing a weird name for their child. I'd like to have a kid, because you can name your kid anything you want. I like that part. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, look, what if this is a coincidence? Because they, it's a, like, relatable, it's relatable uh, comedy. You know, it's relatable jokes. S maybe, you know, you find a relatable thing and y'all just happen to make a joke about the same thing. Let's hear it. Let's hear it out. Hold on. Let's, hold on. Let me go back. Child. I like to have a kid, because you can name your kid anything you want. I like that part. <laughs> I like to give my kid an interesting name, you know? Like a name with no vowels, maybe, you know? <laughs> just like, pull the pfft, <laughs> Just like 40 Fs, that's his name. Then Dane's bit four years later. I already have names picked out, I don't even know. First kid, boy, girl, I don't care. The first one that comes out, I'm naming it. I think it's beautiful. It's feminine but strong at the same time. Time for bed. I said time for bed. The iconic Steve Martin had a... I feel like that's just a thing where two people thought of the same thing, you know, like it's, a, it's like it's not even like a really well constructed joke. It's just I'd name my kid like triangle or it's like the joke in the 1970s where he discusses parents naming their kids. Some people think they were both inspired by the same joke. However, the second accusation was the itchy butthole bit. Like I was staying in a hotel and the soap was really nasty and I had an itchy asshole for like a week and I could have won a million dollars. I still would have been going, fuck my asshole! It itches! I don't know if you've ever gotten this. About, uh, it was about 2.30 in the afternoon. I got the itchiest asshole I've ever gotten on record. And I keep a record of my itchy assholes. May 14th, 1985, I had a very itchy asshole. This one ousted it. Get out of here! The third accusation was regarding a bit where... Itchy, it, niggas, niggas assholes be itching sometimes, man. No, it would have been bar for bar if he was like, I could have won the lottery and I'd still be like, my asshole, God damn it, May 3rd! That's like, that's where it's like, okay, bro, like you literally, that you had to, you had to have copied him. But it's it's an asshole. Everybody has everybody has an asshole, man. And it itches. 
Louie and Dane witness someone about to be hit by a car, and they don't know what to say to prevent it. it okay, here we go, another example. Hold on. It was happening really fast. I had like that much time to yell, you know, what can I yell in that much time? It's, hey, you got to my God! You know, that's not... She's going to open the door, gosh! Shit! As the car was coming towards him, I reached out and I said, oh! Oh! That's all I could think of to say. All three jokes are delivered differently, but it's an extreme coincidence that Dane's 2005 album has three bits that cover the exact same premises as Louis' 2001 album. Louis didn't. Uh. Okay, so it's kind of crazy that it does all happen on within the same album. Like the same three jokes that he's being accused of stealing, but. I feel like someone said this nigga might be stealing. I feel like they're different though. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's different that like obviously they're the same jokes, but it's like I don't know. Asshole. Yeah, everybody would probably make a joke like that. A baby's name. Yeah. The car thing is kind of crazy though. Like I don't know. It's, it's like tough, you know actually blame Dane though, and in a weird turn of events, Louis invited Dane onto his television show to do a scripted scene where he confronts him. Some of my jokes. I, I, I think you saw me do them, I know you saw me do them, and I think they just went in your brain, and I don't think you meant to do it, but I don't think you stopped yourself either. CK thinks Dane had a case of cryptonesia which is basically when you think you had an original thought or idea, but you heard it somewhere else and totally forgot. Despite Louis giving Dane a pass, comedy fans still hated him, but the joke theft didn't stop there. Dane had a joke about a shoe store in 2007 that was almost exactly the same as Dimitri Martin's in 2006, where they both talk about asking for a shoe size and the worker comes back with the wrong size, resulting in them having to cut off a piece of their foot. I went into a shoe store and I said, uh, hey, can I get those in a 10? The guy said, sure, and he went in the back. And a couple minutes later, he came out and he goes, I don't have a 10, I have a 9. <laughs> Great. Because while you were in the back, my toes were severed off. <laughs> she walks out. She comes up to me, you guys, so enthusiastic, such like optimism. She's holding a boot. She comes right up to me and she goes, um, we have it in a 9. <laughs> Great. You guys also have a bone saw anywhere nearby? <laughs> Joe Rogan even says Dane stole one of his bits about tigers f***ing, but Dane- Yeah, see that one? Now that one's just like, that's kind of like bar for bar, word for word type shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one, you know? And that was like a year apart changed it from tigers to rhinos. Rogan took matters into his own hands and confronted Dane with a phone call, seeking an explanation. Dane apologized to Joe and said he would axe the bit. Just two weeks later, Joe caught Dane telling yet another bit of his on stage once again. Joe confronted Dane in person this time, saying, What the f*** are you doing? You know that's my bit. You heard me say it. What the f*** makes you think you can take my material and do it on stage? Despite numerous accusations and kind of a lot of proof, a lot of people still think these were just coincidences. And I thought the first few were co coincidences, but the the shoe size one is crazy. And then you got pressed by by uh, Joe Rogan twice. And Dane is not actually a joke thief, but Dane got something stolen from him. Money. Millions of dollars stolen by his own brother. Daryl McCauley was Dane's older half-brother on his mom's side, and while growing up, Dane considered him his first real best friend in his life. You as Dane began bitch. to make money in comedy, he asked Daryl to quit his job as a corrections officer and manage his finances. For many years, Dane worked extra hard to not only earn money for himself, but also for his brother's career wow. opportunity. McCauley made an estimated $12,500 a month for his role. However, Dane was forced to replace McCauley as his business manager for tax purposes after relocating to Los Angeles. Despite Cook offering to keep him in the company under a different position, Macaulay was still angry. Although he had suspicions, Dane claims that he just woke up one morning and had an epiphany. And then Monday I woke up and I literally sat up in my bed, turned to my girlfriend, woke her up, and I go, 
I think my brother stole all my money. Wow. Dane knew he had to pursue legal action, but a piece of him still had love for his brother, which showed in his testimony. He shared with the judge in Massachusetts that Cook believes Daryl could have mental issues stemming from his connection to his birth father, who had his own mental disorders. Cook believes it could be genetic and that Daryl felt entitled to the money. Typically, people who are deemed mentally unstable can get a reduced level of punishment. Macaulay pleaded guilty to larceny, embezzlement, and forgery charges. He was ordered to serve five years in prison. His wife was sentenced to two and a half years for her involvement in the scheme, Bitch. and the court ordered Macaulay to repay Cook $12 million. Keep in mind, $12 million is just what they could prove he stole. It's likely that there was a lot more money stolen. From that moment on, the relationship between the two previously close brothers was shattered. Damn. He hasn't spoken to him since. Adding to that pain, both of Cook's parents sadly passed away in 2006 and 2007, leaving Dane in emotional turmoil which ultimately led to his downfall. The faster you rise, the harder you fall. Eventually, Dane ran out of steam. His last CD album was called Isolated Incident in 2009, which featured a much smaller, more intimate setting of 400 people and was filmed in one take. It performed well amongst his fans, but at this point, Dane's shtick had been rinsed. Comedy is a slow grind. You need years to develop material, and by the early 2010s, his audience had outgrown his humor. He had a little string of controversial jokes that got him backlash on the internet, like this one at the Teen Choice Awards where Dane pokes fun at Vanessa Hudgens' leaked photos. Where's Vanessa Hudgens? Girl, you got to keep your clothes on! and another joke where he made light of the very serious 2012 movie theater shooting in Aurora, Colorado. I'm pretty sure that somebody in that theater about 25 minutes in realizing it was a piece of crap probably was like, oh, fucking shoot me. <laughs> Despite the crowd thinking it was funny, the internet did not, which started- Oh my God, come on. That, that, is, a, that is a good joke. That is, <laughs> that is a good joke. Oh my gosh, bro. That's another reason why it's like, if you go to a comedy show, why, like, there should be no recordings. That's why I'm glad, like, when I went to, when you go to Dave Chappelle's show, you literally have to lock up all your phones. You have to lock up your, your phone and shit like that. It's like, what's the, like, like, what do you, like, oh my God. Started a long history of comedians getting their sets leaked and criticized. It's not like he's joking about the fucking, like, I don't know, I don't know, man on the internet. Dane had trouble maintaining his appeal to the youth, and his bad plastic surgery wasn't helping. The hate and resentment from the comedy community finally started to hit him, and he took a step back from the spotlight. He had an It's funny, but it might have been too soon. If you feel that way, then don't go to a comedy show. If something tragic just happened, you shouldn't, and, and it's like global news, you shouldn't go to a comedy show, especially if the comedian's good, because it's gonna get covered. Why wouldn't they cover it? enough money to just chill and a good comedian can make a joke and light out of any situation especially if it's a viral situation that's the point of like being a comedian if you can't do that then it's like you know the fuck you doing comedy for kids like go to disney channel watch the fucking disney channel then if you don't want to be offended by anything Watch Disney Channel and Nickelodeon all that shit. Live a pretty relaxed lifestyle on his own terms. He still did large shows, theaters, casinos throughout the pretty relaxed. Bro, is that your girl or your daughter? Relax lifestyle on his own terms. He still did large shows, theaters, casinos throughout the 2010s, a tour in 2013 and in 2019. But these days, he mostly just spends time with his wife, Kelsey Taylor, who is 26 years younger than him. A creator by the name of Tracy Morrissey speculated some foul play. Dave and Kelsey made their relationship official in 2017 when Kelsey was about 18 and a half years old. Dane says that he met his girlfriend at a game night he hosts at his house. How do you meet a 23 year old? How do you meet? Where do you meet? I used to uh, host every Friday night for two years. I had a uh, like a code names or running charades game night at my house. And then I just ended up meeting her through hosting game nights. How long have you been going out? Going, going out? Yeah. Oh, no, we've been together five years. So now we're engaged after being together five so years. 18. That's she right. Was, she, wow. Oh, yeah. okay. I was like, wait, what? How, we, the, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's legal. This 2016 photo shows a large mix of people at one of his game nights. These don't look like celebrities. You have people in the comment section asking if they can be invited. And when you consider how Dane back in his MySpace days was very comfortable reaching out to people one by one, maybe he just invited his fans to his house. This photo in 2016 shows Kelsey at a game night a few weeks before she was 18. Dane was 45. Tracy went on a deep dive and discovered multiple instances of young girls at Dane's game nights. Actress Joey King, who was 16, 
Emily Lind was 14 in this photo. Emily Robinson, 18. Saxon Charbino was 16. He even posted a photo with the 15-year-old saying, I saw a screening with my homegirl. The common denominator is that all of these girls would go on to be actresses or aspire to be in the entertainment industry. This obviously had people accusing Dane of grooming young women, and ultimately, his wife. Dane hasn't addressed these allegations directly, but he is aware of the backlash. Yeah, yeah. But people give you hell uh, for that. What oh, you sometimes. Say? Oh, you're talking about the internet. That's a whole nother league. Yeah, yeah. That's where you live, the internet and your lawn. In real life, nobody's ever had any kind of uh, anything but like giving us flowers and being very lovely. He even jokes about it in his new stand-up. Yeah, because I'm 49, my girlfriend's 23. She was doing her homework and I said to her, <laughs> I said, bedtime soon, Betty, let's talk before bed bed. Over the years, Dane has regained his reputation in comedy. Not saying people are admitting that he was actually funny the whole time, but they do believe they were too harsh on him or maybe hated him out of jealousy, or maybe just hated him to jump on the bandwagon. He was a massive innovator with social media. Listening back to these jokes was nostalgic. Maybe they didn't age all that well, but one thing for sure is Dane was a huge reason why a lot of young people got interested in comedy. Me especially. I don't think I would care nearly as much about stand-up as I do today if it wasn't for Dane. Remember, use the link in my yeah, description glazing. to start playing War Thunder today. It's entirely free, and PC users will get a large... Dane Cook is your was your introduction to comedy? That's crazy. Nah, Dane Cook... Dane Cook... Uh, it, it was fire, though. He was fire, though, man. Damn, bro. Not his brother. That's fucked. That's fucking fucked. There's another COD trailer. Yo, I think I literally, oh my gosh. It's been three hours. <laughs>